just one warning uh, in the beginning of this talk. I'm not going to present a plan or some kind of algorithm to make the internet secure. Um, I've just collected some thoughts on IT security from a more global point of view, or according to Karl von Clausewitz, uh, the leading theorist in debating wars and peace, um, I'm operating on the strategic level. So um, first I would like to, to introduce why I, uh, I'm, I'm interested in giving this talk, why I chose that topic and why I uh, try to discuss uh, security on a strategic view. Um, last year I gave a talk here at the DeepSec 2010 which was titled Cyberwar on the Horizon and there were several other cyberwar related talks like cybercrime and cyberwar um, connecting the dots. And currently there is a big hype in the media in Europe, in Germany and in other countries too uh, on cyber security, cyber insecurity, and uh, the possibility of a cyber war. Um, the German press is uh, interested in writing uh, articles that uh, the Chinese army is trying to attack us via the internet, and there is a lot of uh, bullshit bingo going on in the press and the media, and a lot of we are all going die tomorrow because of the internet. So um, I try to, to uh, do some kind of more technical analysis if a cyber war is possible, and I gave a talk on that last year. Um, according to my analysis, according to Clausewitz, um, a cyber war is not possible because a war means that you are able to force your enemy to do what you want by overcoming his power, and that is not possible only via internet. You still have to use normal army like tanks, infantry, uh, battleships, and so on. So in my opinion, the term cyber war is a little bit exaggerated. However, um, that the media and the politicians and uh, other people are talking about cybersecurity is, in my opinion, um, a very good development because um, several years ago, uh, security awareness was almost not existent, uh, except for uh, security professionals. So, um, if I remember correctly, in 2000, there was an incident where a 15-year-old Canadian uh, shut down eBay and Amazon using uh, a script uh, hacked by a German hacker from Hannover. Um, he took out Amazon and, and eBay. Uh, he took out Amazon and eBay, and that was the first time that uh, IT security was reported on a large scale in German media. So since then, um, um, awareness has been risen, especially by media and by, by, by journalists. But, um, in my opinion, uh, not anyone involved in the discussion knows what he's talking about. This is especially true for journalists, for some researchers, um, and for some uh, guys uh, uh, speaking in the news on security incidents. Um, there's also something that is very ugly. There are uh, politicians and lobbyist groups uh, using the security uh, topic to push on their agenda, to set agenda for their political point of view. For example, uh, in Germany, some political parties are interested in getting more regulation into the internet, in, uh, in more uh, surveillance and surveillance technology, and they are using that cyber war debate to set that agenda uh, to the media and so on. So um, the discussion could be enhanced in quality too. Uh, so what is the current development in IT security or why is IT security uh, becoming a more or less global problem? Um, IT, information technology, is emerging to many new fields. And with information technology emerging to new fields, IT security also emerges to new fields. Many of those fields or people working in those fields are not aware of information technology problems and information technology security problems. For example, electrical and mechanical engineers, which I have uh, already worked with, have a complete different concept of security. Electrical engineers are interested in electrical security. So security means for them that uh, the user of a device cannot touch the electrical uh, contacts in the inner side, so they use double shieldings or something like that. This is a completely different concept of security compared to IT security. And um, they do have a very static uh, uh, rule or aesthetic view of security. For example, in Germany, there is uh, an organization for standardization which is called in German DIN. It's comparable to the American NIST and uh, it publishes rules on electrical engineering security and mechanical security. And if any engineer developing a new device is following these rules, uh, he will get no problems by the law. So if anything happens and he followed those rules, uh, he's on the safe side and nothing will happen to him. Um, this does not apply to IT security. You cannot create, for several reasons, such um, a static rules or such a list of static rules which, which have to be uh, followed. 
So um, one has to change um, the mindsets of those uh, who are working um, as electrical or mechanical engineer with IT security or IT uh, in general and therefore with IT security. Um, networking and especially the internet is also emerging to new fields. Um, for example, there is the vision that IPv6 enables each coffee maker and fridge to be online. So uh, smart living is a new um, idea where uh, your home should be uh, staffed with information technology, intelligent information technology. So uh, you could use your smartphone to control your heating at home when you're still at your office. Uh, and you could instruct your fridge to order more beer online because you're running out of beer supplies. Uh, this, this is some kind of nice vision for the people selling information technology. It's also a nice vision for the people working in IT and, and uh, building houses. But once again, um, those people designing those products are not uh, having IT security on their mind. They are not aware of possible IT security problems, which will definitely arise when uh, smart living homes or smart homes are built. Um, last year I had a talk to uh, guys doing research in the smart meter field, uh, intelligent smart meters. Um, those are using heavily, or the, they are heavily relying on information technology, and uh, the work group there consisted almost completely of electrical engineers, and they had absolutely no idea which IT security problems could arise there. And uh, once again, for the manufacturers of those things, security is expensive. To make something secure costs money. To design secure in a secure way costs money. To make security checks costs money, and security is not sexy. People who are buying technological products, IT, uh, like uh, mobile phones, computers, or something like that, are mostly not interested in security. They're interested in that their computer looks sexy, that it behaves as they want, and that they can do uh, funny things with their computer or mobile phone, like taking photos, taking movies, uh, be always online with Facebook, Foursquare, or something like that. So um, IT security is mainly completely ignored in the design process and building process of uh, technology, information technology. Um, the old Greek uh, saying of Cassandra, uh, maybe you know it, uh, Cassandra was uh, some kind of prophet who always warned that the, if I remember correctly, Trojans will go down, and she was completely ignored. And this is some kind of Cassandra syndrome, as we call it in psychology. So, the people who always want about IT security are ignored at one point in time. And that usually happens to me if I say, but you have to keep IT security in mind each and every meeting. People uh, uh, start to ignore me and are not uh, longer interested in what I say about IT security. So I can stand there and talk to them and they completely ignore me because it doesn't fit to their uh, point of view or their uh, interests, especially um, the guys who do the controlling and public relations and marketing are definitely not interested to listen uh, to an engineer or an IT security specialist because they are completely unsexy. And they're usually not wearing suits and tights, uh, ties. Um, one, one interesting point is last year I gave um, a short analysis of Stuxnet and there is one thing that is really interesting about Stuxnet because Stuxnet attacked programmable logic controllers, so-called PLCs, which are used on industrial control systems. So it doesn't attack the normal average Windows desktop PC or some, uh, some kind of smartphone, mobile phone or something like that. They attacked industrial control systems. Um, according to Symantec, who wrote a uh, a large paper on the Stuxnet and gave a great analysis of this uh, malware. Stuxnet included the first created PLC rootkit. So Stuxnet was the first time a rootkit was designed for programmable logic controllers, or at least the first known rootkit. There may be others uh, which have never been discovered. Um, unfortunately, those industrial control systems are mainly, again, developed and operated by electrical engineers who have their different concept of security. Um, further malicious software might attack other PLCs or industrial control systems. The ones who have been attacked by Stuxnet were mainly used um, in the uranium program, especially in the Iran. And uh, therefore, people think that Stuxnet was built to attack the uranium uh, program which was uh, which is running by the Iran. But one could uh, use that rootkit um, to, to attack different kind of programmable logic controllers, for example, used in traffic lights or at airports for the uh, uh, security controls, for the security uh, measurements there. 
Um, another interesting thing that currently happened is that a car has been hacked by American security researchers with a manipulated uh, audio CD, MP3 CD. So they uh, manipulated the CD and got control of the computer uh, which is controlling the car. And when you control that computer, you can of course also hack that car and change, for example, the pedals for brake and, and uh, gas or something like that, or you could change the steering wheel. And uh, which is also interesting, you could uh, manipulate the car and uh, use a rootkit or something like that to clean up after an accident so no one will ever be able uh, in a forensic analysis to find out that that car has been hacked in an electronical way, not in a uh, mechanical way. So a lot of new um, attack vectors are currently opened up and once again, IT, sec uh, IT, security, IT security doesn't play a role in the design of that systems. Um, there will also be a talk on uh, automotive security here on uh, tomorrow, as far as I know. Yes, tomorrow. Um, this is a diagram, a chart uh, created by the IEEE five years ago, if I remember correctly. Um, they have uh, a diagram of intruder knowledge, which is shown by this dotted line. And they had, have another line of attack sophistication. And what I found most interesting in... Uh, the development of attack sophistication and intruder knowledge is that a lot of attacks are done by intruders with very, very uh, few knowledge about IT security and, and computer systems at all. Most attackers are not well-educated hackers or people with a lot of, of knowledge about technology, but most um, vulnerabilities and exploits are used by script kiddies or other people who just use uh, pre-manufactured computer programs, scripts or um, exploits that are available on the internet. Um, I have one example for this, um, zombies, botnets, and distributed denial of services. Uh, botnets containing usually thousands or even millions of zombie computers, computers which are under control uh, by a Trojan horse or a rootkit, uh, and can be used to attack, um, or they are usually used by cybercrime groups to extort companies like banks. Uh, so they blackmail them that they either should pay some money or they will shut down their network uh, or website with uh, distributed denial of service on their servers. Um, those botnets are usually created by automatic scanning of large nets and uh, networks and automated exploiting of detected and already known vulnerabilities. Most of the software used by those cybercrime groups uses vulnerabilities which are rather old. They don't use uh, unknown zero-day exploit like the guys who uh, developed Stuxnet. They use uh, exploits which are already known and uh, sometimes uh, where even patches are available for them. Um, the main average user of computer systems are still not aware, uh, or many average users are still, uh, are still not aware of IT security and IT security concepts. So they don't, uh, they are not interested in IT security. They are of course not interested in keeping the system up to date. Um, many uh, people who uh, I personally train in IT security, uh, who are sent to me by the company for training, uh, say, why should anyone attack me? I'm just an average user. I don't have anything special. I don't have. Uh, uh, much money on my banking account, so no one is interested in, in attacking me or something else. So, um, unfortunately, uh, many people don't uh, invest time or knowledge into IT security, and if they are aware of IT security, they are often lacking the skills to secure or harden their systems. And according to a report given by Microsoft, about 40% of exploits use vulnerabilities where security patches have been available for more than 12 months. All these security incidents uh, could have been prevented because the security updates by Microsoft are already there and they have been there for at least 12 months. So 40% um, of these exploits are very easily to be prevented, very, very easily, but unfortunately they are not prevented. Um, another problem which I'm very interested in is, since I studied uh, psychology, I uh, do focus a lot on social engineering and security awareness. And social engineering is, in IT security, a uh, technique or technology to circumvent security mechanisms by misusing human behavior. One could say that uh, a social engineer is hacking people instead of hacking computers. Or, uh, to sum it up in... Uh, some sort sentence, why should I crack etcmaster.passvd if I can talk a user into revealing his password? And that social engineering um, is now uh, combined with technological with script attacks. For example, uh, you can use uh, automatic scripts and programs 
to create enhanced uh, spear phishing attacks to collect data or password or install malware on some accounts. For example, you can uh, check uh, social networks for the name of friends of an intended uh, target to see, for example, uh, who went to school with whom, and then you can forge that uh, identity of a former school comrade um, of an intended uh, target and uh, fake his identity and send malware or Trojan horses or something like that under that fake identity. And the possibility that the attack will uh, be successful is uh, much higher if you use such uh, social engineering enhanced spear phishing methods. And um, 10 to 15 years ago, when I uh, first did social engineering, you had to do a lot of research. You had to work a lot to find uh, information and facts about people, for example, with whom they went to school or uh, which other managers they do know or something like that, or um, which football club they are a fan of. Nowadays, you only have to go to Facebook. You find all the data there online. They are presenting it, uh, the data to you, and you can use them, and you can uh, do the research within a single hour or maybe even less. And what is now very interesting, you can do this automatically. There are scripts available which harvest, uh, for example, Facebook to collect those data. And those data is then used to create spear phishing emails. And those emails are very, very successful. They have a much higher success rate than the standard uh, Nigeria scam uh, email where people are trying to send money to Nigeria or another African state. So um, this is one of the uh, most interesting and most evolving attack vectors for the next years, I would say. Um, especially with the combination of uh, smart mobile phones where people are telling uh, uh, directly where they are currently on, uh, where they are uh, currently uh, walking around with location-based services and such, and uh, combined those data from the mobile phones with the data from Facebook, you can do a lot of interesting social engineering things. Yeah, um, there is another point that came to me being a psychologist uh, by training. Um, I think of IT security is not just a technological problem. In psychology, we would say it's multifactorial. So you have multi dimensions or multi factors of IT security. Unfortunately, most IT security professionals or specialists just think of IT security as a technical or technological problem. But IT security also has uh, besides a technological dimension, a psychological dimension, a social dimension, a political dimension, and of course a legal dimension. And I would like to give some points on that uh, dimension on the, on the further slides. Um, IT security has, in my opinion, to extend its limitations to technology. IT security professionals should cooperate with, for example, psychology, social science, educational science, um, didactics, adult education, law, or politics. And I would like to show why and how. Um, the human factors are also very interesting when one speaks of IT security or security in general. Um, human factors research is a branch of uh, psychology, especially industrial or engineering psychology, at least in the German-speaking uh, countries. And um, human factors is interested in working on man-machine interaction. For example, there is a research project going on at my university uh, on the cognitive load of cockpits and electronic assistance in cars. So is it a good idea by several car manufacturers to um, develop electronic assistance and give a lot of information to you? Are you still able to cope with that information? Or might that information uh, create some kind of denial of service in your cognitive abilities and shut down your brain so you can't uh, uh, steer the car anymore? Um, Man-machine interaction does not limit to um, cockpits, cars, and, and airplanes. It also uh, applies to uh, interaction between users and computers, users and operating systems. And an operating system that is not usable, that has poor usability, is usually an operating system with a lot of security flaws because um, many users who are not able to, to get along with that computer system will make security fails or make uh, install security problems. Um, another point for human factors or psychology in general is security awareness and capacity building. Uh, the main questions, questions or problems I usually uh, focus when doing uh, security awareness campaigns in companies is how do I motivate people to get interested in IT security? This is a really huge problem. 
standing in front of them and saying, IT security is a big problem, usually doesn't work. You have to find other ways to motivate them, um, to get them to get them interested in IT security. Uh, like I already said, most people say, I'm not an interesting target, I don't have any money, I don't have uh, security uh, or, or uh, special, special data on my computer or something like that, I'm just an average uh, John Doe, why should I be attacked by someone? Huh? And um, there has to be much more research in, in motivational and educational psychology on how to uh, get to those people and how to get those people interested in IT security. And once I got them interested in IT security, how do I train and educate people in that? Huh? How do I train people to install patches? Installing patches is somewhat easy for uh, a teacher. Uh, it's somewhat easy to, to, to explain and, and uh, educate people in installing patches, but there are uh, much more complex security measures. For example, cryptography. I started to give talks on cryptography 15 years ago, and it is a really big problem to get people uh, to know how to use, for example, PGP to encrypt mails. And I've been a NetBSD developer for some years, and I have tried to train NetBSD developers to use PGP, which I completely failed. I only got two other guys to use PGP, and those guys are developing operating systems and they aren't able to get along with PGP or are not interested in. So uh, how do you want an average computer user in, in, in a company to be aware of IT security and to be interested in IT security? And how do you want to educate and train them? Um, another problem, I'm, I'm focusing on social engineering. Um, social engineering, if you want to prevent social engineering, you have a social problem. And social problems can only be solved by social solutions. You cannot solve social problems by technical solutions. So if you want to do something in social engineering, you have to use psychology and other social, social sciences, for example, educational science and so on. Um, unfortunately, the research in social engineering on a professional university level is not that high. I wrote my bachelor thesis on that problem on measuring IT security and, and, uh, and, and how to develop uh, countermeasures to social engineering. And I really had to run around and ask professors if they are willing to supervise my thesis because uh, when the psychology or didactics professors heard that I would, would like to write about IT security and information technology, they mainly said, oh my god, computers, I don't have any clue about that, please go to another guy. So uh, uh, there is a problem that, that psychology or social science do not cooperate with technology that well. Uh, most people who are interested in technology study a te technological course like uh, computer science, informatics, electrical engineering and such, and those who aren't interested in uh, uh, technology usually take something else like social science. And uh, it's very hard to get those two kinds of people to work together. And unfortunately, they do have to work together if they want to solve, or if we want to solve security problems. So uh, to sum it up, there is a lot to do. Let's get it on. Let's do something. Um, there are also um, problems or things that could be enhanced uh, for the manufacturers of software. Um, manufacturers of software have to deal with security problems. One good example is Microsoft nowadays. They evolved a lot during the last 10 to 15 years. 15 years ago, uh, they were not interested in security problems. If you think of the user management of Windows 95 or Windows 98, uh, it still sends shivers down my spine that those computers were on the internet in the days back then. Uh, fortunately, Microsoft has evolved a lot and has changed a lot of their politics and policy within the company. Um, they develop and roll out patches. They established that Patch Tuesday, if I remember correctly. Um, they get in contact with the QG researchers, with white hat hackers. Um, they work together with people reporting security holes and flaws. Um, Apple, for example, now has uh, sued uh, a white hat hacker who reported security uh, problems in their operating system. And this is, in my opinion, not the way to treat uh, security experts by companies. So manufacturers of software have to be aware of security matters and they have to establish uh, a strategy or management method to, to cope with that. Uh, problems. Um, another dimension I mentioned is politics and law. Of course, these views are limited to Germany. I, it is, is very hard for me to understand German laws, so uh, I'm absolutely not able to understand American or English or French laws, so I limit this a little bit to Germany. Um, in Germany, we do have a concept of product liability by the manufacturer. So if you're manufacturing any goods, you are liable and responsible for the security and safety of that product. 
Uh, you cannot uh, sell a computer which uh, gets on fire when you turn it uh, on. Uh, if that happens, um, you are required to, to repair that machine and you are also forced by the courts to pay some money for people who have uh, uh, been threatened by your product. Um, another concept is that of user liability by the user. So um, as a user of a technical system, you're also uh, responsible and liable for the safety of that system. For example, um, you are uh, responsible and uh, liable for the security and safety of a car when you're driving around with it. So if you're driving a car where the brakes are not working, you are responsible completely if anything happens. No insurance of yours will pay for that accident if you drive a car with broken uh, brakes. Unfortunately, the courts in Germany have ruled uh, in some decisions that the users in Germany are normally not responsible or liable for the technical security of their computers because to quote the judges, IT security is a too complex and too complicated topic. We cannot force you this to be uh, responsible for their security because uh, they would be forced to learn a lot of things and uh, we cannot force the users to do so. So uh, mainly the judges ruled that those people are not liable for security problems. For example, um, there were decisions made by courts of people whose computer have been turned into zombies and used in botnet attacks and the victims of that botnet, botnet attacks um, sued the owners of the zombies. And uh, they wanted, of course, some money for them, or at least that um, the, the, uh, the judges say that those people are responsible for the problem and should uh, fix their computers, but unfortunately the judges were not willing to do so. Um, in my opinion, this should be changed. I'm not a an, an lawyer or a law expert, and I'm also not that much into politics in Germany, but um, we could at least try to, to start a discussion in the media or in politics that people should be liable for the security and safety of their computers. And in my opinion, the manufacturers of software should also be responsible and liable for the products. Uh, in my opinion, it's completely unacceptable that big companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple, or so on, are producing operating systems with security problems and security holes and not react on it. Uh, it's absolutely clear to me that you, can never, that you never can get 100% of security on a technical system, but at least um, the manufacturers have to establish some kind of management strategy or at least a strategy on handling these security problems. And if they don't or aren't willing to do so, they should be forced by uh, the law, by politics to, to implement it. And uh, this does not only has to be done by uh, establishing a new, a new law, but for example, uh, government or offices could decide to not use uh, software produced by manufacturers who are not willing to invest in security and safety. Uh, there's one example, some years ago, um, the town of Munich decided to switch to Linux and the complete town management, and two or three days later, Steve Ballmer fl uh, has flown directly to Munich to talk to the uh, city management that they might change their decisions. So uh, once the town of Munich announced that they are switching to Linux, uh, Steve Ballmer came directly to Germany to do some spinning and... Uh, uh, public relations and so on. So it works. And it might, for example, works if, for example, the German armed forces say we are not willing to buy Microsoft uh, operating systems anymore because they're insecure. And uh, if that would happen, in my opinion, or I would say that Steve Bormer or another manager would come at once to Germany to uh, try to prevent the German armed forces for doing so, from doing so. Yeah, politics. Um, security politics or um, security policy is an essence of every government and the discussion of war and peace is of course uh, something that is usually done by security politicians or by, by, by governments or states or the United Nations or armed forces. So um, um, each government is responsible for setting up police forces, firefighters, hospitals, armed forces and so on to protect the citizens. citizens. Um, the internet is now being discussed by politicians mostly in a very strange way. So currently there is a debate on the remote forensic tool of the German uh, law enforcement community. They have developed some kind of Windows rootkit uh, to spy on uh, fugitives uh, in, 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 in Munich. And uh, one of the fugitives found out that there might be something wrong with his computer, turned it into the KS Computer Club in Berlin. And uh, four weeks ago, the KS Computer Club published together with a big German uh, news journal, uh, 10 pages analysis of that uh, remote forensic tool, as they call it in uh, the politics. And now there is a big discussion going on if the, the politics, the, the policies, um, the law enforcement community, if they should be allowed to develop such root, such root kits and uh, deploy them in the wild. 
especially uh, since the security of that rootkit is very, very limited. It has a lot of security flaws. Of course, such a rootkit has uh, uh, administrator uh, rights or, or root rights on that computer, and uh, the developer of that rootkit used a hard-coded password for, this, uh, for the communication between the command and control server and uh, the rootkit, and that password is sent clear text over the network. Uh, so if you if you uh, just catch or, or eavesdrop on that password, you can take control over any of that uh, federal Trojan horse. And the password for uh, that Trojan horse is in every case the same. It is R2D2C3PO. So there is even some kind of humor in the German police available. Um, I don't know if, uh, if the analysis is currently available in English, but if you, read, uh, if you are able to read German, go on to the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. They have a lot of articles written on that. Um, yeah, you should also talk to polit uh, politicians. You should try to educate them. You can uh, avoid voting for them. You can found uh, a, pol a new political party. Um, the German Pirate Party or the Pirate Party of Berlin now is, with all 15 pirates, a member of the Berlin Parliament because the people are aware that the typical or the old parties are discussing internet and computer games and, and IT problems or topics um, in a very strange way. And so they voted completely for the uh, Pirate Party in Berlin. So all 15 members of, uh, or all 15 people who, had been, uh, who have been available to be elected uh, were elected into the Berlin Parliament. And now each and every single political party in Germany has an agenda on IT security, computer games, and so on, because they are frightened by this development, of course. Um, another thing the politics could do, if the manufacturers of software don't care about security, the government could force them by law or by avoiding buying their products, like I said on the uh, other slide. Uh, yeah, not only single nations uh, should uh, work on, on cybersecurity, IT security, but also uh, the United Nations. Governments and countries should cooperate in fighting cybercrime. So um, if a cybercrime, if someone is doing cybercrime from Russia on a German computer, of course the German police cannot uh, uh, fight against those Russians because they are working in a different country and they are not Germans doing any uh, crime. So the governments and countries should cooperate in fighting cybercrime. There are already corporations, for example, in fighting terrorism or fighting uh, tax laundry or something like that, or money laundering and, and, and tax crime. Crimes, and um, this should be extended to IT security and IT problems and cybercrime. Uh, many countries are not aware of cybercrime. Uh, I did some research on the situation in Ukraine, White Russia and Russia, and unfortunately most of the Russian police forces uh, are not aware that cybercrime exists. And if they are aware, they don't have the technology, they don't have the time and money to buy um, computers or forensic tools or something like that, and they don't have the knowledge. So um, the police forces of uh, states who, have do who don't have that knowledge could be trained by other police forces. As we are, for example, currently doing in Afghanistan, a lot of Afghanistan police men, officers, are trained by the German police, the German federal police in Afghanistan. They are uh, having training programs for those policemen, and they could do the same, for example, for Russian policemen in cybercrime. So the Russians could fight cybercrime in a more efficient way. So maybe in, in, in the near future, the United Nations are able to shut down cybercrime gangs, or at least those who are too dumb to work in a... Uh, in a more sophisticated manner. Yeah, solving solvable problems. Um, like I already said, according to Microsoft, 40% of exploit used vulnerabilities where security patches have been available for more than 12 months. Microsoft evolved and implemented a cybersecurity strategy, which is a very good thing. Uh, think of the times when Windows 95 was rolled out and Microsoft didn't give uh, a fuck about uh, computer security. But unfortunately, the users did not evolve. They are not interested in IT security, they don't have no awareness, they don't have the skills to uh, set or harden uh, and secure the systems. So um, here are some, some uh, hints or ideas how the uh, different dimensions of security could work together, what they could do. So um, as a psychologist, I would say psychology is responsible for awareness, for training and for education. 
Um, as far as I know, there are no really scientifically based uh, curriculums, or curriculums available um, for the training and education of IT security skills. There are several handbooks available in the US uh, developed by the NIST, and there is also um, an, an manual available by the German Office for uh, Security in Information Technology, but they are more or less some kind of hands-on and not really um, scientific based with a didactical theory and so on. So uh, when I wrote my bachelor thesis, my professor forbade me to use those manuals because they are not scientific based. So we should do a lot of more research in that uh, field. And uh, there will also be a talk on human factors research here on DeepSec uh, today. So if you're interested in that, go to that talk. It uh, will be very interesting, I think. Um, the politics, uh, the politicians and politics could make users more liable for security problems. And so um, if you want to get rid of those easy solvable security problems, which are usually exploited by script kiddies, we have to make the users liable for the security and safety of their op uh, computer systems. And this can only be done in the end by the politics. So um, at least when a law is established in Germany that every user is responsible for his computer and people um, are forced to pay money if their computers are exploited, then they will definitely react uh, because you can get almost any German uh, to awareness when it's about money. Um, the media can also do something uh, about awareness and they can cover the topic of IT security, but please do so in a serious way. There is a lot of, of, of media coverage of, uh, on the topic of IT security, which is not very serious and which is more in the sense of, oh my God, we're all going to die tomorrow and uh, the Chinese army is trying to attack us and trying to kill us and uh, we shouldn't use the internet and that's not uh, a way to discuss that problems. Uh, the social science could do something about knowledge management in organizations. Um, this is a big problem I usually face when doing security awareness campaigns in companies and organizations. It's, it's, it's a big problem to, uh, if you already have the knowledge, it's a big problem to deploy it in an organization so that every member of the organization is aware of IT security and um, has developed the required uh, skills and uh, uh, capacities to, to solve security problems. So a lot of work has to be done. Many of this work can be done by IT security uh, specialists or professionals with a technical background. Some has to be done by, non -tech, not, uh, by people with non-technical background, but in the end they all have to cooperate. And uh, I think it's, it's uh, vital for, all, for IT security that IT security professionals cooperate with non-technological professionals. So this is uh, the last slide where I have to say something about. Um, to sum it up, IT security has many dimensions and IT security professionals and researchers and people who are working in IT security have to connect to that dimension. Problems can often only be solved in some or all of these dimensions. There are only, there's only a very limited set of IT security problems which can be solved completely by technological uh, matters or, or patches or something like that. So um, most problems do uh, extend to uh, multiple dimensions of IT security. And another thing, IT security is not static. Uh, static. It's an evolving process. It's a process, and process means management. So, for example, um, uh, economics or management uh, professionals can also teach us something about IT security. They can teach us on how to manage security, how to manage organizations to be up to date with their knowledge or something like that.